Recently I saw a video that ranked all of the areas in Bloodborne from worst to best based on a fan vote, and I was genuinely shocked when I saw that Hemwick Charnel Lane, Bloodborne's creepy take on a rural witchy village, showed up just a couple minutes into this video, landing at number 19 out of 20. This ranking fascinated me. Hemwick is one of my favorite areas in the entire game, and I think there's so many things it does well with its design. And while Bloodborne contains a lot of fantastic and memorable levels, ranking this one as second to last kind of blew my mind a bit. What's even more fascinating is that I had already been planning out a script for this video before I saw these rankings, which means that I was dumb enough to think people would want to watch a video about the design of a level they hate. But you know, I'm too far in now. Might as well just go through with it. So here's the unwanted level design of Bloodborne, Hemwick Charnel Lane. Bloodborne is full of engaging, diverse, and cleverly designed spaces. From the moment you open the gate into central Yarnum at the start of the game, it quickly becomes clear that FromSoft's trademark level design is not only intact here, but it's one of the stars of the entire experience. Hemwick Charnel Lane is actually one of the many optional areas in Bloodborne. You can complete the entire game without ever coming here, but you'd be missing out on a really unique part of the world if you do. It also proves to be vitally important from a gameplay perspective, as it's here in these witch-tainted lands the player receives an item that allows them to utilize runes to improve their character. And lastly, it serves as the entry point to another optional area, and one that ranked much higher on the list, Kanehurst Castle. So while Hemwick isn't required reading, it's about as close to crucial supplemental material as you can get. But what is it that makes its design so impressive? The short answer is that it excels at both the environmental and technical sides of creating a level that feels good. So let's start with that first piece and take a look at how FromSoft created one of the most atmospheric and aesthetically engaging locations in all of Bloodborne. To understand what makes the atmosphere of Hemwick so impactful, it's important to recognize what comes before it. The entrance to Hemwick Charnel Lane is found through a side path off of the Cathedral Ward, specifically around the side of the Grand Cathedral. So by the time the player gets to this point, they've traveled through Central Yarnum, at least a portion of the Cathedral Ward, and possibly Old Yarnum as well if they stumbled into that path. All three of these areas paint a picture of different neighborhoods of the city of Yarnum, each of them a denser, more urban-like environment consisting of streets, alleyways, bridges, and plazas surrounded by Bloodborne's trademark gothic architecture. And each one does a remarkable job creating separation from one another both in their layouts and their visual styles, but they all still decidedly feel like three pieces to the same puzzle that is the inner core of Yarnum. Comparatively, Hemwick Charnel Lane is something entirely unique. It's here on this pathway leading to Hemwick's entrance where the player feels, perhaps for the first time, like they've escaped Yarnum for a bit, entering the outskirts and revealing that there's much, much more to this world than we first imagined. Hemwick Woods, the space that connects the Cathedral Ward to Hemwick Charnel Lane, is our first indication that things are different here. This open wooded area is crawling with rifle-carrying villagers and their hunting dogs, leaving open the question of what they're doing there. Are they out hunting beasts, like so many of the villagers we've seen so far? Or are they perhaps guarding the entrance to Hemwick, ensuring no one makes it through to uncover its secrets? It's a substantial change in atmosphere, and it bolsters the already strong world building found in Bloodborne up to this point. The first time you enter Hemwick, it's likely you'll have some variation of the thought, how strange, and immediately begin to wonder what exactly this place is and why it's here. Hemwick's arrangement of rural trailways and small houses give it a distinct off-the-beaten-path feel, signaling an eerie departure from the previous areas in the game. The first group of villagers we encounter are also a stark contrast to other enemies we've seen so far. When you stumble upon them, clearly in the middle of some kind of ritualistic state, they seem far too preoccupied with their own business to notice an outsider like you. But of course, with a little prodding on your part, they turn out to be just as aggressive and bloodthirsty as the rest of the lot. Further down the path, we venture into a short indoor area through a series of connected shacks that open out onto these rooftops overlooking the water, a hauntingly beautiful vista in a game that has no shortage of stunning environmental imagery. Now is also a good time to point out that Hemwick benefits from Bloodborne's time cycle maybe more than any other area in the game. The time of day you visit these outskirts can drastically change the mood of the entire area, as its skybox is largely more visible than in other regions and plays a prominent role in setting Hemwick's visual tone. 
It's past these rooftops you'll gain access to Hemwick Crossing, the large plaza-like area filled with executioners patrolling and dogs prowling. One of my favorite visual touches in this section of the level is just how different it can look, simply depending on which direction you're traveling. A quick run up the hillside reveals the building that houses the Witch of Hemwick, this region's boss encounter. Their arena has an undeniable creepiness that matches the rest of the level, its large basement room broken down and beaten up over years of neglect, and ultimately leading to something sinister on the other side. Hemwick in general follows a cohesive, well-established visual theme. Its exposed, almost disfigured trees are an identifying feature throughout each area. Its overgrown stonework can be found in pathways, walls, and structures alike and its alarming excess of grave markers consistently intrigued the player with more questions than answers. The views of Yarnum's other regions far off in the distance remind us that while we're most certainly somewhere outside Yarnum, we're still surrounded by its imposing presence. Bloodborne's artists did such an excellent job combining the natural landscape with Hemwick's man-made components that this village truly feels like an organic extension of the land, not a deliberately designed route through a video game. All of these features, all of these small environmental touches, all of this careful planning results in an area that is incredibly atmospheric, both inviting the player to seek out its mysteries, but also to be cautious when doing so. Hemwick Charnel Lane feels removed from the majority of Yarnum, but that isolation clearly comes with its own sources of trouble. It is one of the many levels in Bloodborne that is intoxicating to explore each bit of it distinct and crafted with a purposeful care that results in extraordinary pacing through a mysterious new area of the world. So let's keep that in mind as we move on, because while Hemwick is dripping in an atmosphere that elicits feelings of mystery and uneasiness, it's also a textbook example of FromSoft's approach to the structural components of level design. Hemwick Charnel Lane uses a similar template to several other areas in Bloodborne a snaking, semi-linear pathway that utilizes two shortcuts. Its layout can be easily broken down into two circular paths that encompass four main sections. The lower village, the houses and their rooftops, the Hemwick crossing area, and the level's boss encounter. With only one lamp to be found right at the start of the region, Hemwick's shortcuts become crucial to the player experience, and the level's smaller scale makes it a clean illustration of how shortcuts are most frequently implemented in Bloodborne across the board. The initial shortcut, that's this elevator right here, provides the player with access from the introductory area directly to the level's second section. You'll find a shortcut like this utilized in nearly every level in Bloodborne. It's a reward given to the player for successfully conquering the beginning sections of the level, as well as doing their due diligence in exploring the surrounding space. Now, while Hemwick's elevator demonstrates this concept clearly, in practice, it's less impactful than some of its counterparts in other levels. Because Hemwick Charnel Lane is like a condensed version of a Bloodborne level, the time and distance to this shortcut is relatively small, with only a few separate enemy encounters required before reaching it. So while it's nice to have, it doesn't provide the same utility that we see in more sprawling areas with similarly linear design, like the long ladder in Old Yarnum, or the elevator that gives you quick access to the right side of Kanehurst Castle. Hemwick's second shortcut, this large gate found up the hill from the starting area, ends up being much more impactful. Bloodborne uses these main shortcuts to serve multiple purposes. One of those purposes is to create a clearer, more reasonable pathway back to the boss encounter. This is a quality of life choice that keeps the player's sanity intact by not forcing them to hold the run button for minutes at a time as they pass multiple groups of enemies on their way back to the fight. In Hemwick's case, the player simply needs to run through the lower village, past the gate, then take a quick turn to the left at Hemwick Crossing to reach the witches at the top of the hill. These shortcuts also serve as the final step in revealing a cohesively connected level, signifying the player's triumphs over its challenges. With both shortcuts available, what was once a very structured, linear path opens up to allow free exploration across the entire map. Often FromSoft games are discussed for their combat that involves notoriously difficult challenges that create a sensation of accomplishment when finally overcome. 
But what's not talked about as much is that that same principle applies to their level design. These developers have become very skilled at initially constraining the player in where they're able to go, forcing encounters with enemies in order to fully explore each nook and cranny of the map. But after all paths are discovered and all shortcuts unlocked, the player develops a sense of mastery over the level, as it inevitably becomes theirs to roam and explore as they see fit. That feeling is prompted the second we open the gate to Hemwick Crossing. I also mentioned pacing a minute ago, and this is one area in which the developers used Hemwick's smaller scope to their advantage. While larger regions like Central Yarnum or the Forbidden Woods provide more real estate to explore, Bloodborne's level designers make efficient use of Hemwick's condensed size by filling it with a dense collection of distinct subsections. The player is smoothly guided from one landmark to another in a way that rewards progress with novelty, and the result is a level with no wasted space and no empty filler. There are many examples of how this is done effectively, too many in fact to include in this breakdown. So for now, here's a short summary. Hemwick's first subsection includes choices like unique enemy behavior and movement, as well as environmental foreshadowing before redirecting the player's path. The second section effectively disorients the player from their goal and breaks the pace of an otherwise largely outdoor level. The third continues Hemwick's structural variation by turning a once linear pathway into a now open environment with multiple approaches. And finally, the fourth houses the level's boss encounter, which seemingly receives a lukewarm reaction from fans, but certainly provides a fight that is quite unlike anything else you'll encounter in the game. Even with the excellence that is found throughout Bloodborne's level and world design, it's unusual to find single regions that contain such distinct sections, further cementing Hemwick Charnel Lane as one of Yarnum's most unmistakable levels. The soundness of Hemwick's layout and mechanical decisions, coupled with its unrivaled atmosphere and world building, make for one of the most memorable locations found in Bloodborne. But clearly a lot of people don't agree with that. So, what might be the reasons for that? The fact that Hemwick is probably the cleanest example of the blueprint FromSoft uses for Bloodborne's optional areas tends to mean that it's also one of the most basic of them, at least from a structural perspective. Kanehurst Castle follows the same two shortcut template, but does it in a somewhat interesting way that has the player essentially tracing the outline of the level while looking out onto a snowy environment not found anywhere else in the game. Old Yarnum is quite a bit larger and more complex than Hemwick, contains some of the best environmental storytelling in the game, and utilizes a unique obstacle in the hunter who constantly shoots at you with his Gatlin gun. Non-optional areas, meanwhile, provide a far less linear experience, something that many players hold near the top of their priorities when it comes to FromSoft level design. So it's not unreasonable to assume that these mainline levels would rank higher for that reason alone. I would also wager that a large portion of people, when assessing this level, place a greater weight on one aspect of it than the rest, the Witches of Hemwick. For better or worse, the Witches of Hemwick are what many people most immediately associate with Hemwick Charnel Lane. Understandably, they share the same name. And it's not unusual for one aspect of a level to tear away a bit at the rest of the work done in the content surrounding it, even if the rest of that work is really impressive. This fight is quite unusual, and does not follow the formula for bosses that FromSoft has made a living off of. That is, extremely durable enemies with deliberately aggressive movesets made to overwhelm the player. And while personally I kind of find some value in introducing an intentionally bizarre boss fight, I do understand the arguments against it. The witches simply don't pose much of a threat. In fact, they barely fight back themselves other than the occasional dodgeable spell. They're slow and weak and rely on spawning other creatures to fight for them. It's a fight that often involves the player having to chase after their target rather than a boss that aggressively engages on their own. It's not crazy for players to expect a challenging, exciting, more traditional boss battle based around the witch theme that surrounds Hemwick. So in a way, the witches of Hemwick as they are have become a bit of a victim of their developer's own skill set and their fans' expectations. But FromSoft decided to go in a different direction, and if you're a player who just really dislikes this boss encounter for these or other reasons, it's likely you're not thinking too highly of Hemwick Charnel Lane as a whole. And lastly, there's a third psychological piece that took me a while to realize may be playing a role in players' impressions of this level. It's kind of scary. 
Bloodborne is not a horror game by design, but it certainly toes that line in more ways than FromSoft's other work. Its environments, enemy design, and narrative all contain at least some themes of horror, and these themes are confronted very openly in Hemwick Charnel Lane. The feelings of isolation and being removed from the rest of society, the paranormal witch activity present throughout, the constant signs that this entire town is basically one massive grave. Hemwick is undoubtedly one of the creepier locations in all of Yarnum. It is not home to any friendly NPCs, and the only sign of life outside the enemies you encounter is a voice behind this one door that doesn't exactly put the player at ease with their dialogue. I just can't wait. <laughs> So I think it's possible that Hemwick just kind of creeps people out. And I also think it's valid to dislike a part of a game if it elicits an undesirable emotion for you personally, even if you can recognize and respect that it may be well made. So yeah, there certainly are reasons why many players would rank Hemwick Charnel Lane lower in their list of Bloodborne levels. But that's part of what makes level design so interesting. It's both an art and a science that leaves plenty of room for player preference and interpretation, and Bloodborne in particular is full of levels that have the potential to facilitate these discussions. And that's where I'd like to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Hemwick compared to other locations in Bloodborne? Which levels do you think rank clearly higher on your list? Which levels do you despise having to play through, and for what reasons? We'd love to hear about your answers in the comments below. For now, my arguments are clear. Hemwick's level design establishes an environment that feels extremely unique while also folding in perfectly to the overall mood and narrative of Bloodborne. Its mysterious atmosphere made possible by several artistic details is among the best at creating real feelings of intrigue in a game that is constantly presenting the player with interesting questions. And its densely packed, diverse layout and routing make for one of the cleanest examples of FromSoft's level design in the entire game. And don't forget it's also creepy as f- Hey, thanks for watching. Videos on the design of specific levels are some of my favorite pieces of content to create, and Bloodborne is a game that largely excels at this aspect of game design. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and like it, subscribe if you're really into this stuff, and let me know if there are other levels in Bloodborne or otherwise that you'd like to see me break down in detail in a future video. See you next time.